in high school, like if there was nudity in yeah, a movie, the, the, like it's filed away. Like I know where it, where it is. This podcast is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Spoiler warning for whatever is in the title of this episode. And now for the obligatory socials. Please like, share, and subscribe. You can find the podcast on Twitter at HorrorPod69. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Slasher, and Goodreads. Become part of the Disturbed community by asking for the Facebook group and Discord links. Send dick pics to the Horror of Babylon podcast at gmail.com. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Horror of Babylon. In closing, you can let your friends know that The Horror of Babylon is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible and all other major podcast apps. Welcome to episode one of the Deadite A Thon, sponsored by Four Horsemen Comics and Gaming, where we discuss the Evil Dead. I am Ryan, and with me, as always, is a Yingling Light Beer, <laughs> and also Daniel. I'll swallow your soul, Ryan. You told me you would swallow something else. I, I swallow everything. Including the lies I tell you. <laughs> Thank you to our patrons, Ab- Abigail the First, Breaker of Chains, Mother of Dragons, and Logan, the, the Full, full metal, metal Patron, and Ben, the, the Fourth, fourth patron. patron of the Hope, uh, uh, and Mia the Fifth, the Rainmaker. She makes it rain, yo. And the Deadite a thon is brought to you by Four Horsemen Comics and Gaming, which you can visit at the Morgantown Mall in Morgantown, West Virginia, the Mall at Robinson in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or you can shop online at shop.fourhorsemancomics.com, and. If you go in there, don't bother trying to say hi to Ronald the Third, Grampus of Christmas, because I heard that he's on an excavation in some mountains in Pennsylvania, and something about a, a tape recorder, and I, I don't know. I just I know he's not available. But if you do go there, make sure to mention us by name, or if you buy anything from them online, put us in the notes. Yes, make sure they know we sent you. Trigger warning, just gross blood. And yuck. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Like Th- these films are sort of known for their gore. Yeah. Um. No. No harm to children unless you count like, or maybe these people are like, older teenagers. Like. Yeah. I kind of I kind of view them as like young twenties, but I don't mm-hmm. know. So. I nope. think they're played by some like young twenties. Yeah. I don't know. Bruce Campbell looks young, but I still think he's probably like thirty five. And this. <laughs> Hold on. Let me. Let me look that up. So he, this is 1981, mm-hmm. 58. So that means he was 23 when this movie was made. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So yeah, that's it for trigger warning. So our history with the Evil Dead, both the film franchise and this movie specifically. Daniel, kick us off. Okay. So I'm a little embarrassed by this. Mm-hmm. I rented this movie as a young child because I always like to rent horror movies. Hmm. And this movie used to terrify me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, depending on how young, uh, sure. Not even junior high. I think I was maybe 10. Yeah, like if I was 10, this movie probably would have scared me too. <laughs> I saw this for the first time in high school and it did not scare yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. But if I was nine, sure, yeah. And it was one of those movies that sort of just always existed in the back of my head. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't even become aware of like, the fan base for this movie until college. This is like one of the ultimate cult, maybe more so Evil Dead 2, but this franchise. The the franchise has one of those fan bases that if you're into it, you're like... Really into it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, James, who we went to college with, is Mm -hmm. really into it. Uh, I think Ash is also really into the series. It is a cult movie and cult movie franchise, and I think specifically... Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness have a lot of fans. Mm -hmm. Uh, I saw it for the first time in high school 
My brother showed it to me. He is one of those like big fans. Big fans. Big big Bruce Campbell uh, person. Uh, when I saw it in high school, I was like, it's okay. Um, specifically the uh, the first movie. Mm-hmm. I I'm also honestly I'm probably one of the weirdos who think, likes the first movie the best. Mostly because if you find stuff funny in this movie, it's sort of funny on accident. Mm -hmm. Where the other movies sort of play up the ridiculousness and the, like over the top gory nature where this I felt was like trying. It was... Alright, we'll get into it. Yeah. Um, and then like he has... Okay, well, you didn't, you didn't really like that one as much, but now watch Evil Dead 2. I was like, oh, yeah. I, I think I like this one more, but I'm still just like not enthused so yeah. so i never saw i've never seen army of darkness and then i did go see the 2013 remake with you and ash and mother of dragons i remember liking the remake but i haven't seen it since then i remember not liking it at all and that was kind of the point where i was done like i didn't watch the show i didn't watch the new movie the new movie is something else so i was i haven't touched evil dead since then since 2013 it's been 10 years yeah so last night when i watched the evil dead it was the first time in a decade the vampires are pure myth superstition i may be able to bring you proof that the superstition of yesterday can become the scientific reality of today background this movie is famously directed by sam Raimi who you may know from the original Spider-Man trilogy and Doctor Sh the Doctor Strange sequel, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness? Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, he's also done Boy Kills World. What the fuck is that? <laughs> Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Oz the Great and Powerful. I, I didn't know he did that movie. Huh, yeah. Drag Me to Hell. Oh, yeah. Drag, Drag Me to Hell is a Sam Raimi movie. And Dark Man. Something I will say about Sam Raimi, when you're watching a Sam Raimi movie, you know it's a Sam Raimi movie. Yeah. He's he's one of those directors that has a distinct style with how he likes to make his movies. And while he has evolved a little bit, it still keeps that same sort of feel. When I was watching Doctor Strange, I felt the Sam Raimi-ness. Yeah. More so than in the Spider-Man movies, I felt like. I think the Spider-Man movies were one of his like first really, like, super big budget movies. Yeah. So he probably had a studio that was like... You can't make Evil Dead. Yeah, like they were taking him going, you need to come back to here. <laughs> Which got two really good movies out of that. So. Yeah. Yeah. And and I there's even parts I like about Spider-Man 3. The over, things I don't like about that are not his fault. Over the years, Spider-Man 3, I've grown ease, gradually yeah. easier on. In 2007, Spider-Man 3 was like the Judas. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, like I can sit down and watch Spider-Man 3 now and be mm -hmm. happy about it. It's fine. Um, did he also write The Evil Dead? Yes. He. So it was written and directed by Sam Raimi. And it has a budget of $375,000. And honestly, after watching that movie, that sounds like too much. I guess I just don't know. I don't know movie budgets. Yeah. I, I mean, like it just that sounds like a lot to me especially in 1981. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously not a lot. That's a very low movie budget. But like, I feel like this movie, and I don't know, I'm just, if you would have asked me before we looked up that num number, I would have been like, I don't know, the movie was made for like 50,000 or 100,000. Mm. Yeah, it's like the lowest of low budget. The box office is between 2.7 million or 29.4 million. Uh, that seems like... That's a big range. Let me see if there's a explanation of that. It grossed 2.4 million domestically. And 27 million dollars overseas. But sources differ on exactly how much it so looks like. So it made, but probably made somewhere in the 20-ish million range. That's interesting. I would be curious to know what countries it was super successful in because it, it made a lot more money overseas than it did in America. Yeah. Or maybe... So, the movie opened in only 15 theaters on its opening weekend. Which ain't a lot. No. 
So maybe it may have just had a very limited release in the United States, and that may be why it only made 2.4 million. And mm. st- so maybe if it had a regular release in the U.S., it maybe it would have made a, con- a comparative amount. One of the f- I I know little bits and pieces of Evil Dead trivia, so I guess I'll just interject them whenever they come to mind. Uh, they had a showing for this movie at a theater, mm-hmm. and I think this was before the wider released. Uh, we test audiences were a lot different back then, but basically a test audience. Mm-hmm. And the producers were sitting there, and the audience was laughing. And they were like, "We got to go do like a million different reshoots. We got to fix this movie." Until they realized they were apparently laughing with the movie and having a great time, so they decided to just go and go. Okay, we're just gonna trust the movie and see what happens. So I guess it worked out. I feel like when I laughed at this one, I'm laughing at it, not I, with it. Th- that's the only. Th- that's just. But I believe that. Yeah. You know, I, I believe that because I'm not. Wi- I'm not in the fan base. I'm. Mm-hmm. I, I'm okay being the minority on this movie. So. It, it's weird. Uh, I like this movie more than I like Evil Dead Two. I think I like the TV show the best. I think the TV show is like the best mix of all of them. Every person I've talked to about the TV show loves it. Yeah, I, I'll, I'm sitting there watching the TV show, and I'm like, I think the TV show is legitimately pretty great. Sometimes, I mean, we all we get in that you know that debate where the original's better, the remakes, blah blah blah. But sometimes the newer versions are just better. Like I, I legitimately think the newest Ninja Turtles movie is the best Ninja Turtles movie. I still haven't seen it. It's really good. Oh, and the newest Mario movie is also the best Mario. Movie. <laughs> I still want to see the timeline where they got Tom Hanks to play Mario. Oh, uh, that was something that was gonna happen. At that some may point. have been the one time where I was like, maybe Tom Hanks wasn't the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, that script was supposed to be like a fantasy movie, and I'm like, I just, I want to, I want to see it. I yeah. want to see it. I, just like uh, Jesus the Engineer. I, I want to see it. I want to see the timeline where Nicolas Cage got to be Superman in a Tim Burton movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What was we did? We talked about a movie recently that they passed up Tim. Oh, Gremlins! He mm-hmm. they passed Tim Burton up on Gremlins. I I prefer the Joe Dante a, but I but I, I want to see. You still want to know? Yeah, I want to know what Tim. If Burton's, I could hop dimensions, that's what I would do. I wouldn't be just watch movies. Just I'd watch go, memories, yeah. I'd be going to different movie universes. I, I want to be the Sorcerer Supreme, but not so I can save the multiverse. <laughs> I just want to see that. Me. That's one of the jokes in the Flash movie is they didn't change the Marty McFly actor, Michael J. Fox. Yeah, they whoever the original actor was, Michael J. Fox. Th- there was somebody that was cast before him. Oh, I and and I the know. Flash when he changes the timeline, they never recast him. Oh, uh, hmm. I, I wonder who that was. Who was originally cast as Barbie? <laughs> cast as. Marty McFly, Eric Stoltz. I don't. Apparently know. played the role like super serious. Ugh. And that, and that's why they recast him. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Eric Stoltz, <sighs> Pulp Fiction, S- The Butterfly Effect, Pulp Fiction. I've seen these movies, but I don't know who this guy is. You just know Michael J. Fox. I mean, yeah. He didn't get to be Marty McFly, so yeah. he didn't get the. He didn't get the. Isn't that roles. weird fucking show where Frodo Baggins has a dog and guy in a dog suit? Yeah. He was in Crazy. All right. Yeah, I don't know who that yeah. guy is. Okay, cool. Um, so back to Evil Dead. So in the first week of its video release, the film made a hundred thousand pounds in the United Kingdom, and quickly became the week's best-selling video release, and later became um, the year's best-selling video release in the UK, outgrossing The Shining. Uh, that's another one of those little bits that are, like exists in the back of my head. Is it made so much money just from like VHS sales? And yeah, rental places. It was one of those movies that people would always and laser go disc. Rent. I can see that being like, like in the eighties, like being like a good like sleepover movie. Yeah, it's a good like I want to go down to Blockbuster mm-hmm. or whatever was in the eighties. Yeah, your local video store, and you you rent Evil Dead. Yeah, for a weekend. 
on Laserdisc. <laughs> Laserdisc. <laughs> Did you have a Laserdisc? No. My dad had a Laserdisc. Yeah. We, my school had a Laserdisc, and we watched... I remember watching, like, Disney movies on Laserdisc and thinking, this is weird. But my dad is one... I mean, you've met my dad. He's one of those, like, weird tech dudes that always wants to have, like, the new bit of technology. Mm-hmm. Critical. What's what's the... Like, I don't even know what, like, the, the rotten whatever is. The rotten... T- Let's look at 86. Up. Wow. I'm surprised it's that high. It has a 7.7 out of 10 on IMDb. That surprises me less because that's mostly people who watch the movie. Yeah, I I never take like I don't I don't really take Rotten Tomatoes into account, but I really don't take IMDb scores into account. Um, obviously, the the other thing background wise that this movie is super well known for is launching Bruce Campbell into his whatever it is that Bruce Campbell's career is. He's just Ash from the Evil Dead. He's been almost permanently typecast as that dude. Mm-hmm. He's either playing Ash from Evil Dead, mm-hmm. or he's playing himself, or he's cameoing in a Sam Raimi movie. He had a cameo in Doctor Strange, didn't he? Yes, and all the Spider-Man movies. Yeah, I, I remember all of his Spider-Man cameos, but I don't remember his Doctor Strange. He was like a security guard in one of the other dimensions. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, funnily enough, my favorite Stan Lee cameo of all time is in Spider-Man 3. Mm-hmm. What is your favorite Stan Lee cameo? I, I don't. I guess I've never ranked them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't what, have a ranking. That one's I, just as my As much favorite. as I'm not a big fan of like the Amazing Spider-Man movies, is mm-hmm. when he's the lizard and Spider-Man are fighting in the library, and Stan Lee's yeah, just kind of... And he's listening to it, and it's like all silent in the background. That one is really good. I honestly think that like just visually that's neat, mm-hmm. and you get your cameo. So even if that wasn't a cameo, it would still be a cool scene. I like that one as well. A lot of the really good ones are in Spider-Man movies. Yeah. Because I, I think that was kind of his his baby. Yeah. And, I mean, the Evil Dead sort of launched... I mean, it, it definitely launched his directing career. Sam Raimi. Yeah. 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 So it's responsible for the careers of both Bruce Campbell and, and this, Sam Raimi. It was made by a bunch of amateur filmmakers who were like, let's get a budget together for a movie. And let's make something that technically qualifies as a movie. And we want, And they made the movie they wanted to make. Mm-hmm. And, you know... As a dude who wants to be a creator, tries to with this podcast to the best of his abilities, it's like, I can kind of appreciate that. Like, you're putting your heart and soul into something, yeah, I and res- you find an audience. I respect that, and obviously they they found their audience. Mm. I'm not crazy about this movie, but if, if this was the movie I wanted to make and I made it, you know, regardless if I found my audience or not, I would be super proud. Yeah, and then... When you get to make the movie you wanted to make and you also find an audience. Yeah, that's that's great. And then you get to make four sequels plus a TV show plus comics and video games. And... Could you imagine if you made something and then Marvel went, Ryan, <laughs> we want you to direct the solo Wolverine movie. The fourth one? Yeah. <laughs> no, we want you to do Schism. <laughs> oh. Uh, That would be like Frank Miller doing a Superman movie. It's just like (laughs) shit on Scott Summers, like 24-7. As long as I get to play Scott Summers. (laughs) That that guy who's directing the new X-Men movie, he made Scott Summers a pedophile. (laughs) He's just sitting there reading the lead of the whole movie. (laughs) I wouldn't do that. (laughs) I wouldn't do that. Uh. That would be bad. I might try to get James Marsden back to play Scott Summers, though. Or, yeah. yeah, that could be a pro- that could be a pre-show, like yeah. the the Schism movie. And that's that. Another story in the classic, infallible three-act structure. Good enough for Aristotle. Good enough for The Simpsons. Mr. Sislak, I have a feeling there's going to be one more act to this story. Well, I'm not hanging around for that. Four acts. To structure and themes, does this movie really have? themes does this movie really have structure or is it just one one like gross thing to another gross thing to another gross thing in terms of structure the only way i can describe the structure is it's a sam raimi structure it's almost like having a conversation with somebody who's super scatterbrained yeah and they're telling you a story right Mm-hmm. But then they switch topics, but the topic is actually kind of related to what they're trying to tell you. 
but they're sort of sidetracked. To me, I feel like they just decided we're just not we're just going to throw story and character out the door and we're just we want to make a gross movie with gross special effects and we'll have like a very loose premise a bunch of kids go to a cabin in the woods and they find an evil book and if you read these words the evil book does bad things they they wanted to make a like their take on a zombie movie is basically what we got it's almost like a possession movie yeah and a zombie movie. It's like it's like they combined, and that's eventually mm-hmm. what the deadites basically become are like possessed zombies. Yeah, because they're not dead, but they're they are like zombies. Yeah, and you basically can't kill. That's what terrified me when I was a kid is the idea of a zombie that you can't just shoot in the head and mm-hmm. win. I got really frustrated watching this movie uh, because I just kept yelling at Bruce Campbell like. They told you in the beginning, you have to dismember them. Mm. You can't stop them unless you dismember them. What's so hard about it? Dismember them. And then he gets his girlfriend on the table. He has the chainsaw and he doesn't dismember her. (laughs) I'm like, dude, like you're just asking to get fucked over. Whatever. Okay. (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) Um, Also, I, when I was younger, I got really into like specifics and would like get in serious arguments like so okay so we're saying like these are like zombies but they're not zombies they're like possessed but well they are possessed but like i got in a like yelling fight with a friend after we watched i am legend because he said they were zombies i'm like they're not zombies they're not reanimated dead yeah <laughs> they're they're victims of a plague they're still alive they're not zombies and like it like it ended the friendship <laughs> like I got so mad. It's so funny because a lot of people these days call I Am Legend like the first zombie apocalypse movie and I'm always like they were vampires. In the it's a remake of a remake which is based on a novel and in the novel they're vampires and in the Will Smith one they're victims of a plague. Mm-hmm. Like I mean they are in the book too but the plague makes them vampires. And the, the vaccine makes them vampires. The vampire, yeah, yeah, you're right. So, <laughs> okay, I'm uh, still waiting for my COVID shot to make give me vampire powers. The Republicans promised me bad things would happen if I got this vaccine, and I've had like three of them, and I still don't have any of superpowers. What? What the hell, Republicans? You can't get a Speaker of the House, and you can't get me superpowers from bad vaccines. What the fuck? Is Gore a thief? No. Is uh. Is stupid teenagers a theme? I get. I mean, kinda. Like, they kind of play. That's more of a trope. Yeah. Because they play with those tropes in like Cabin in the Woods. Yeah. Cabin in the Woods is basically what if Evil Dead was part of a larger conspiracy? Okay. So here's a question I had for you when I was watching this. Mm-hmm. Is this the first or one of the first stupid teenagers in a Cabin in the Woods horror movie? Or are there a bunch of them that take place before this movie? This is the first one that I know about. Okay. Uh, unless you're, like, including, I guess, I'd have to look up when, like, Friday the 13th was made, because those are, like, log cabins on a campsite. <laughs> but it's not an isolated cabin out in the middle of nowhere. I'm pretty sure it's the 80s, Friday the 13th. 1980, so actually that predates this by one year. But like, but like I said, it's, that's not an isolated cabin. That's a campsite. Yeah. So I, to my knowledge, this is the first one that like started that idea. We'll, we'll try to fact check that, and we'll come back to that in our Evil Dead 2 episode. Yes. Okay. They're coming to get you, Barbara. So let's move to characters. And we're, we're using the term characters loosely. I feel like there's no point in burying the lead. Let's start with... Ash, Ashley J. Williams. The only actual character. Is he even really a character, though? He becomes one over time. Over time, but in this movie. Uh, He's basically not even scared kid number or whatever. He's just a kid who's willing to chop the other ones up. No, he's not! (laughs) Okay, played by Bruce Campbell. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Ash in this movie? In, In this movie... He's fine. Um, I kind of feel for him because I feel 
I, especially when, like when I first saw this movie, I was like, man, it would suck if like all of your friends got possessed at once and they were like stabbing at you and. I was like 16, 17 when I saw this movie, so I didn't I didn't have like that little kid like sympathy. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, this guy's dumb. <laughs> uh, I love that he's wearing a jean shirt. And jean. Denim, yeah, like he's a just denim, denim on denim. Yeah, yeah. And he's just carried that look on throughout all of these movies. And he doesn't give a shit about his super obvious unibrow. <laughs> just like, it's there. Deal with it. When it comes to Bruce Campbell's acting, I feel like it's another one of those things. It's like Sam Raimi's directing. It's super distinct and maybe one note, mm -hmm. but it is what it is. You're either on board or you're not. You're either on board or you're not. I'm I'm on board with him. I think he, I think he's kind of these days. I think he's intentionally funny, mm -hmm. and in this movie, I'm like I think this is, he's unintentionally hilarious. I'm not on board, but I never have been. Like we did our. We did our top five, like, most overrated actor or celebrities, mm -hmm. like, a long time ago, and I think he was, like, my number three or something. Yeah, th this is the sacred cow that you're willing to burn. I just don't personally understand the appeal, but I'm also not, like, I'm not going to go out to the picket line with a Bruce Campbell sucks sign. I'm not going to fight people over it. Yeah. Like, you, you're on board or you're not. You are, I'm not. That's mm -hmm. fine. I couldn't tell you much about any of the other characters in this movie. I hated the other guy, Scott. Mm -hmm. Like everything he said irritated me to no end. The the thing that like pissed me off the most was when they hear a sound in the basement and they're standing over the door and the one girl says, maybe it's an animal. And he starts like laughing like, oh, maybe it's an animal. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> You're out in the middle of the woods. <laughs> It's a basement in the middle of the woods. Like, I, I get animals in my basement, and I live in town. Like, I, I have raccoons in my house. Yeah, I've, I've had a snake in my basement. Like, yeah. I mean, like we live in a city, and it happens to us. Yeah, I mean, like, it's extremely viable explanation. And in fact, I would say it's the most likely explanation that there's an animal in that basement. That guy, he was just a dumbass. Granted, you know. I've read way too many horror novels and seen too many horror movies. I would not go. I would have like put a couch over that basement. Oh yeah, door. no, I wouldn't. I never would have stayed at the the cabin. Like, I, well, sorry, I never would have crossed the bridge. <laughs> when I saw that bridge, I would have backed. I was like, nope, we'll go find a hotel. Nope, we're yep. open out of this situation. We're all done. My goal was to stay in a cabin out in the middle of nowhere. It's one of this one of my like little horror bucket list items. I mean, we can do that. Like, you can we can rent a cabin. Like, uh, yeah, I'm like, I want to see if spooky shit happens. Yeah, <laughs> we tried that once. Didn't go over well. Um, okay, so that was Scott, played by Richard Demanicore, and then the other characters are. Shelly, which is Scott's girlfriend, Linda, who is Ash's girlfriend, and Cheryl, who is Ash's sister. Mm -hmm. And th these characters are so... I, I I don't want to say poorly developed because I don't. they didn't try to develop the characters, but I didn't realize she was Ash's sister until, like, the last, like... The only reason I know it was a sister is because it's a plot point in the TV show. Mm-hmm. Okay. But, I mean, like, what is there to say about these people? Uh, we recently saw uh, Alien Covenant, mm -hmm. and I talked about how I forgot everything about the character. It's the same thing here. There's one of the characters who's like, they can draw, and that's the one thing they establish about them. Which one was that? I don't remember. <laughs> I remember a scene of one of them drawing. Yeah, like she she's drawing a clock and it looks fine. And then mm -hmm. oh, something spooky's taking over her hand and, and she draws the book. And I'm sitting there like But it's before they find the book. It's before they find the book. I, that that that's probably my coons is like the roles are a little loosey goosey. <laughs> Which that never changes. In fact they get looser as time goes on. I didn't realize there were any rules, except for you have to dismember them to, to stop them. But it, the movie kind of makes it go, you have to read from the book to get spirits to do shit. But they were already doing shit. 
Yeah, like you, like you get a POV shot. The first thing we get is a POV shot of what I'm assuming is whatever's gonna possess people. Yeah, going through the woods and like fucking with them a little bit. Yeah, and they don't actually read from it. They play a tape of yeah, someone else, else reading, reading from, from it. it, which I guess counts. I don't. Yeah, know. I, I think that counts. Yeah, like if you're re- if you have a tape recorder or someone reading a spell, mm-hmm. I'd uh, I'd go around with uh, Voldemort's voice and I'd be clicking it. I'd just be pointing a wand, click. Yeah, I didn't do it. Voldemort <laughs> did. <laughs> did you know that the original intent was for the T to be silent, and his name was Voldemort? So much so, in fact, that the, it's either the first two or the first three audiobooks actually pronounce his name as Voldemort. I did not know that. I learned something today. So if you ever meet a really pretentious Harry Potter fan who calls him Voldemort, that's why. Okay. I think it changed. I don't know why it changed, but I assume it's just because the the people reading the book just called him Voldemort. They just kept doing it. Because there's a T there, mm. as she just kind of gave up and said, okay, his name is Voldemort. I hate silent letters. I mean, it's just it's just not intuitive. It's mm. not like you can put an, a footnote at the bottom of the page in a novel and saying, the T is silent. Mm-hmm. So, obviously it would work in a movie, but okay. I'll kill you all! <laughs> I'll drive you crazy, and I'll kill you all! I'm every nightmare you ever had! I am your worst dream come true! I'm everything you ever were afraid of! Let's branch characters into scary shit, and we'll ask our first real quick question here in scary shit, and then we'll talk about the Deadites as characters and as if they're scary or not. But first... Is this movie scary? No, I am not. I am not nine anymore. No, this is one of the least scary. Like it's gross. Yeah. Um, you're probably not on board with me. I think it's entertaining, but I'm sitting there and I'm like, nothing about this scares me. I, I maybe like, if I'm being like super generous, like the idea that you're caught in the middle of the woods and there's something going on that really sucks. That's kind of scary. Yeah, but or if, I mean, if you're trying to drive your was it his sister or his girlfriend he was trying to drive home, and the, sister, and then the bridge is collapsed, mm-hmm. like that would freak me out. But that's like me being like trying to apply a real world situation into the movie. I thought the Brit driving across the bridge was scary. Yeah, that's and that's where it ends. But of course, like. If I put myself in the situation, well, then yeah, sure, it's terrifying. But you know what we should have put on trigger warning was tree rape. So tr- the tree rape is like the one thing I remembered about this movie, <laughs> yeah. and I just kind of in my head assumed that was like one of like the end bits. Mm-hmm. That's like something they build to, but it's literally it's like, the f- smack, it's like smack dab right in the like. It's the first like big thing that happens. Yeah, honestly, to me. It was a lot less outrageous than I remember. Because, mm. like, in high school, it was like, Oh, my God, she's getting raped by a tree! It, you know what? I also remember it being way more graphic. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it's it's very... Uh, not saying that it's not... It couldn't be triggering to some people. Obviously, it can. I don't want to use the word titillating, but it's, mm. like, it's very much there to be the shower scene of the movie. Is it? Yeah, I think so. Who's getting titillated by that? Uh, people. I don't want to meet those people. <laughs> it, it's the, I want to put titties in a scene of the horror movie. Oh, yeah. The, you the, do see her. You see a boob at one yeah. point. Yeah. And it's a nice boob. Yeah. It, it's not played as, I guess, straight as a, any other rape scene yeah. might have been. Yeah. Is what I'm trying to say. Okay. I... Yes, okay, there, there is nakedness, but I guess I was thinking, like, the titillating part was the, the actual tree rape. No, like, the, okay. the all the skin show. Like, okay, that makes, it's yeah, an, that makes it's more an sense. Excuse for, it, lo- it's, it came off as more of an excuse for nudity as opposed to uh, sexual assault by demon. So it, it that's just, like, showing the difference between, like, high school virgin versus 30-whatever, yeah, not a virgin. Like, it... Like in high school, like if there was nudity in yeah, a movie, the, the, like it's filed away. Like I know where it, or it is. Yeah. But now it's just like, oh, okay, that's a boob. N- n- now it's a titty. I-, I got I got to be a man whore for a little bit. It's just yeah, they exist. 
Uh, not not knocking the boobs. The boobs yeah. are great. Love them. So the Deadites as characters. I'm trying to think of how to phrase this because they don't have like a lot of characterization. Mm-hmm. But they're the only things that seem to have like character to them. Like they're very they have personality. Most of the characters, aside from the the other guy, not Ash, they're all not very like strong outspoken characters. Yeah. That guy was like talking and saying opinions like through the whole first bit of the movie. But all the other ones are just kind of I don't want to say meek, but they're very quiet characters. Yeah. But yes, the Deadites, like, they talk a lot. It's like if Pazuzu got free reign for 30 minutes. Yeah, it's like Reagan at the beginning of the movie versus Pazuzu Reagan. Like, yeah, it, and it's just like, I'm going to get to do whatever I want with this body, and it's fucking great. Mm hmm. Which makes a certain amount of sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's basically what's going on. Okay. Uh, um, They're very distinct. You know, they get all the lines, and they get to, uh, Oh, it's a bunch of overacting for the sake of overacting. Yeah. And they've never changed that about the Deadites across the franchise. They're like, just just go bananas. Just. I mean, I think that's probably what a lot of people enjoy about these movies. Mm -hmm. So, good. Yeah. Um, from what I can remember of the remake, is it just felt like it took itself way too seriously, but I don't remember. I re okay, this is. I'm gonna say that my memory now, mm -hmm. and then we'll compare it when we get to it. Mm -hmm. Is I remember being worried about the remake because the trailer took itself super seriously, and then I remember the movie not. And I remember the opposite. So we'll we'll see. We'll when see. We get. We'll see what yeah. happens. And obviously, we could still interpret it different ways. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other thing that we normally address in scary shit. And what I feel like is the main point of discussion of this movie is special effects. And this is actually where I like take the most issue with this movie. There are like two or three effects that I really like in this movie. And I don't like I know this is a sacred crowd for some people, but I think I obviously like even a lot of people who like this movie would probably say the effects are bad but that's why they find it entertaining. For me, the effects are bad, and I don't find it entertaining. I think they're, I just think they're perfectly fine for, I guess, the budget. So there's, like... Like, on the Deadites, they have, like, those gloves with, mm -hmm. like, the skin. There are parts where you can see the end of the glove around their wrists. <laughs> I, I guess I didn't notice. And it's just like, ugh. <laughs> and also, um... I forget which girl it is. The one that he he buries out in front of the cabin. Mm -hmm. She has brown hair. And when he he obviously when he picks her up and puts her in, it's a dummy. The the wig on the dummy has curly gray hair. <laughs> I guess I also didn't notice. <laughs> and it's just like uh, I don't know. It just it takes me out of it. I'm sorry. But there are a few the mainly what the effects I liked are the stop motion effects. I feel like that's the highlight of the movie for me personally. Um I guess whenever I'm watching this, I'm trying to think about uh people who are on a super obvious budget trying to make the best movie to their ability and I'm looking for like how do you do certain things when you don't maybe have the special effects know-how or the budget to do certain things. Like how do you shoot certain scenes? And some of the things are like uh, stabbing the pencil through the the obvious fake ankle. That one and looked th decent. And then you show a close-up of the person's face screaming. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get around it is you make it, you know, two different shots. Mm -hmm. And then you composite them together so that there's like a connection between the stab of the fake ankle and the person's face. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about like what are the workarounds that they're trying to use. For special effects, it's usually, for me, like, do I believe it? And sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Mm. I'm usually, like, I'm interested in, like, the behind-the-scenes, like, making of, like, all that kind of stuff. But normally, like, the in-universe thing is the first thing I'm thinking about. Mm-hmm. 
Oh my god, are you Stephen King? No, I'm Dean Koontz. Oh. All right, so let's go to Kings and Koontz. Um, I can be real quick and easy. Uh, mine is the same. It's the effects. My King is the effects I liked, and my Koontz is the effects I didn't like. I think my King is... I got a sense of fun from this film. Like, the people... I could feel that the people who were making made this movie were doing their absolute hardest to make the movie that they wanted to make. Like, uh, the actors... Them not being good characters is a, a scripting issue. But them giving those over-the-top performances, having fun as the demons. I don't think it's a scripting issue. I think it's just a decision that they made. Yeah, they just did. It was, characters wasn't weren't yeah. important. We're throwing story and characters out the door. It's spectacle. Yeah. And uh, Bruce Campbell, this is the first time he got to be Bruce Campbell on camera. And I just, I dig, I dig that energy. Uh, my Koontz... I guess for my coons, I'll just go for the times the effects didn't work. Okay. What What's an effect you didn't like? This, this is going to sound really dumb, but, you know, you got the big stop motion monster, mm -hmm. and then it, it melts away, mm -hmm. and it cuts back to Bruce Campbell, and then when it cuts back to the monster, there's, like, obviously real alive animals in the thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just like... The real animals, it, it's fine that there's real animals there, but it sort of, like, clashes mm -hmm. with the, the melted stop-motion thing. There was one point where somebody lost a limb, mm -hmm. and it shoots out, like, Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, what is that? It's not blood. And there was another point, like, it's at the end where, like, the stop-motion ones are, like, melting, and it looks like applesauce or like cream corn comes like gushing out of one of their like arms they're like what would look gross coming out of this I mean I just that doesn't work for me I mean, obviously there's probably people who think that's cool but it's like I'm just confused by what it's supposed to be <laughs> okay rankings uh, where are you placing the evil dead 1981 uh, it's not in my top ten. I mean, just taking a quick look at my top ten. I'm going to put it... right below Reanimator. Number 18 below Reanimator and above the original Firestarter. Mostly ju just because I think Reanimator is basically the same movie, just done better. I agree. I think I could agree to that. Uh, it is my new number 77, uh, below Pet Cemetery Bloodlines, and above the Boogeyman, the original, like the Dollar Baby Boogeyman. All right. It's just like, you're on board or you're not, and I'm not, and it, it's fine. It's just like, you know, some people like chocolate ice cream, and some people don't like chocolate ice cream, mm -hmm. and it, I just... If this is chocolate ice cream, then I don't like chocolate ice cream, and that's fine. Like, I'm not going to sit here and whine and bitch about this movie. I think this is more of mint chocolate chip. No, don't you ever. <laughs> that's the that's God-tier ice cream. <laughs> don't compare this thing to mint chocolate chip. It, it is God-tier ice cream, but people who like mint chocolate chip really like mint chocolate chip. And everybody else goes, you might as well be eating toothpaste. I think you're, I think you're just a little bit... I'm biased because of your interactions with Carrie. <laughs> I don't think the rest of the world has quite so extreme opinions on mint chocolate chip. I've gotten that opinion from so many people. <laughs> Everyone in my house eats mint chocolate chip, so... I don't... Based, you're lucky. <laughs> is based good or based bad? Based is good. See, well, like it depends on who's saying it. <laughs> people explain it to me what it means, and it sounds bad to me, but then, like, everybody says it sounds good. It is a good thing. Yeah. Okay. It... it it's like this is a good opinion to have it's just usually used by like internet trolls or alt-right people okay so that sounds bad <laughs> yeah i'm just telling you where it originated not not what it means i think it like originated on forums it's like the word kino like the the gambling thing uh no kino just means it's like a really good movie i've literally never heard that yeah you there's watch kino's journey the anime yeah, you watch a good movie and then you're like, this is real Kino. I think 
my personal like biggest thing I just kind of think it's boring like there's nothing to latch on to in this movie I find the deadites really entertaining but it's just like there's no story to follow there's no characters to follow uh, special effects constantly take me out of it like if there were one thing that I could like focus on and enjoy like let me find a different example so like what's a movie that totally sucks but like the watchers movie mm -hmm. that's a terrible movie but there are just like these random parts that are just like so funny like random bits of comedy so that I have that one thing to latch on to but this movie has has nothing for me for me personally homework in a world where evil dead 2 never happens and ash escapes this situation how does he explain the disappearance of his four friends to the police like he's found on the side of the road covered in blood trying to make it back to civilization how how's he get out of this how how's he get out i don't know uh because this is also a plot point in the TV show. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he basically goes into town and just straight tells everyone what happened and everyone believes he's insane. Mm -hmm. They don't explain how he gets away with it. But the entire town starts calling him Ashy Slashy, believing he killed all of his friends up at the cabin. So, like, the TV show, like, takes place after this movie? Yeah. With, like, an adult? Yeah, I mean, it's played by Bruce Campbell however many years after this movie. That's weird. Yeah. Okay. I guess it worked for What Hot American Summer. Question for the listeners. What's Ash? Ash. Uh, Ash. Ash no, I, I got versus one. our friend Ash. I, I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Ash Williams versus our buddy Ash. <laughs> I'm not making a short of <laughs> No, we can't. It's fine. He's not going to like that. <laughs> no, he's going to be compared to Bruce Campbell. <laughs> it's either that or Ash Ketchum. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Actually, like, when, like, the period in high school when, like, my group of friends, like, discovered these movies mm -hmm. and started, like, talking about them all the time, for the longest period of time, I thought they were talking about Ash Ketchum. Like, Ash is so cool, and he has a chainsaw, and, like, I didn't see that episode. He's going to throw out his Charizard and Ash Williams is going to shoot in the face with a shotgun. <laughs> and but he's got five more. He, he does have five more. Pikachu gets the chainsaw. He's got four more. Plus him. And he's got Misty and Brock watching his back. <laughs> I felt, I felt, I mean, let's go with Ash Ketchum. Okay. But I'm sticking with you until you buy me a new chainsaw, Ash Williams. That's a comic book we should make. <laughs> Just the Evil Dead, but we'll remake Pokemon. No. <laughs> you can have all have all the fun you want with that. Who would be Brock? Oh wait, never mind. I know who Brock is. Brock. It's a pueblo. His Mexican friend from the TV show. Cool. Whose name isn't Pueblo, but Bruce Campbell was just played as like a straight racist in the show. Like uh, Gran Torino, uh, Clint Eastwood. Uh, he's in Ash vs. the Evil Dead. It's more like he's so like culturally like ignorant that he's does he's like stupid racist. Like Michael Scott. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's that's cool. All right. Um, for further reading, Reanimator is this movie but better? Yeah. yeah you said it yourself. And that's pro that's probably a hot take. But is I, it really? This is a sacred cow for people. But then again, so is Reanimator. I mean, I I always kind of got the opinion, and I don't know. Like, I'm not super. I'm not in that community. But from talking to other people. I always kind of got the opinion that Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness are the sacred cows, and this movie is kind of the idiot stepbrother that just led to those movies. Maybe. I don't know. 
I, I like Reanimator. Watch Reanimator. <laughs> Maybe that's just like the impression I got from the couple people that I have spoken to. So why don't you guys l- reach out to us? Like, do you love all three? Do you like one or two or three? Do you hate them all? Do you? I mean, give us your opinions. Reach out to us on our socials. Email us. Tweet at us. Whatever. Let us know your Evil Dead rankings. Like. Is this the best one, the worst one? Let us know what you think. Um, Upcoming on the Horror of Babylon. This Sunday is our kickoff for Season 3 with The Stand, revisited two years later with Hef. And then our next couple bonus episodes are, surprise, surprise, Evil Dead 2 on Thursday, November 9th, and Army of Darkness on November 16th. A lot of people have told me, that I quit too soon and I would probably like Army of Darkness more than the others. I can see that. We'll see. We'll yeah, find we'll, out. We'll find out. We'll find out. But you like this one more than the others. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. We'll, we'll see what happens. It. We have been on the opposite of a few things, so this could be another one of those. Uh, all right. Thank you. Um, speaking of, so I don't have a transition. Thank you to our patrons, <laughs> Abigail the First, Breaker of Chains, Mother of Dragons, and Logan, the, the Full, full metal, metal Patron, patron. and Ben, the Fourth, Patron of Hope, and Mia the Fifth, the Rainmaker. She makes it rain. Yeah. Oh, she makes it rain. And thank you to the sponsor of the Deadite Athon, Four Horsemen Comics and Gaming which you can visit at the Morgantown Mall in Morgantown, West Virginia, the Mall at Robinson in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You can shop online at shop.forhorsemancomics.com. And if you make it in, say hello to Ronald III, the Grampus of Christmas, who has been possessed by a deadite. And actually, he just decided to stop showering for a week and tell people he's been possessed by a deadite to get away with it but it's not the grossest thing I've seen him do. Something about cat litter, so that's fine. That's fine. If you do uh, make a purchase from Four Horsemen in the store or online, make sure you mention us. Let them know that we sent you there. Thank you for re-watching The Evil Dead with me tonight, Daniel. I I got to be paid for this. I got to be. Yay! (laughs) Um... I, maybe my opinion will change by the time we've done all five Evil Dead movies, but so far I miss the Alien movies. <laughs> uh, and thank you to our patrons. Stay tuned for our socials and stay scary. Stay scary, everybody. And now for the obligatory socials. Please like, share, and subscribe. You can find the podcast on Twitter at HorrorPod69. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Slasher, and Goodreads. Become part of the Disturbed community by asking for the Facebook group and Discord links. Send dick pics to the Horror of Babylon podcast at gmail.com. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Horror of Babylon. In closing, you can let your friends know that the Horror of Babylon is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible and all other major podcast apps. Stay scary. Mm-hmm.